Okay, let's watch the second thought. America's looming housing crisis. This episode and others like it are made possible by the generous support of my patrons on Patreon. If you'd like to help support my channel and get early access to every video, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash second thought. Let me just show you that. On paper, Danielle and Kristen Sills are the perfect first time home buyers. They've upped their budget and widened their search of the Boston area, but the last house they bid on had 29 offers. It sold for about 70 or 80,000 over what the asking price was. And it was a 1200 square foot home. Finding an affordable apartment was hard enough before the pandemic, right? But now things are even worse. Some are calling it a crisis. The shortage Absolutely. is now critical. Affordable so-called Class C apartments are 96% occupied nationally. When they go shopping, the inventory, the active listings they can choose from are down about 30% from this time last year. That's just a staggering shortage of homes on the market right now. He compares this with what happened during the subprime mortgage crisis a decade ago. Millions of homeowners defaulted on their mortgages and investors came in to buy the properties and convert them into rental housing. So you're going to see a lot more of this soon, Shep. As you watch this video, you're probably sitting somewhere with a roof over your head. For many of you, it's probably your home. Either that or you're watching at work. In which case, I applaud you for stealing back some of your extracted value. Shelter is one of the most critical needs of almost every species on Earth, including humans. It's integral to the American dream. A modest home with a white picket fence, two and a half kids, and so on. Homelessness is rightly seen as something society needs to address, as most decent people feel that no one should go without shelter in our modern era. And yet, despite the importance of housing and the significance we place on having somewhere to call home, it seems that the U.S. is on a collision course with another housing crisis. It may not take exactly the same form as the housing crash of the Great Recession, but it is coming, and it's not looking good. In this episode, we'll explore the state of housing in the U.S. and consider what factors are feeding this growing problem. Before we get into the causes of this looming housing crisis, let's take a look at a few statistics. If you look at the housing market today, Nuke you'll notice mod. a few things. First, there aren't many single-family houses to be had. People just aren't selling. The houses that do go up for sale are snapped up incredibly quickly, typically within a week or even a couple of days. Having to offer tens of thousands of dollars over the listing price has become the norm if you want to actually have a chance of having the winning bid. If you owned a home and you put it up for sale today, odds are you'd have at least a handful of offers by the end of the day, and many of them would be well over the asking price. Month-over-month -month price increases are now exceeding even the absurd levels we saw in 2006. And we all know what happened shortly after that. What's going on here? A big part of the problem is that the housing market is incredibly short on supply. Pace of housing production has slowed dramatically, contributing to an already serious lack of housing. This is partly due to a shortage of construction materials, and partly just a continuation of the trend of producing fewer and fewer homes per year. As of 2021, the U.S. faces a shortage of roughly 7 million homes. That's a lot of demand. But a housing shortage isn't the only problem here. The big picture is this. Young people are trying to buy affordable homes, but the prices for even the most modest quote starter homes are out of reach. These prices have been driven up by institutional money pouring into the housing market to snatch up homes as investment properties, including the homes of those recently evicted during the pandemic. To make matters worse, some large investment firms are lobbying to end eviction protections so that they can acquire even more houses, adding to the housing demand and homelessness problems at the same time. With single-family homes out of reach for the average working American, the media has begun trying to frame perpetual renting as a good thing, something that benefits young people. The problem there is that even renting is becoming prohibitively expensive. There are now officially zero counties in the entire country where a worker earning the federal minimum wage can afford a one-bedroom apartment. Even for those making significantly more than minimum wage, things are looking pretty grim. There's a common joke that goes something like, the bank said I couldn't afford an 18... I thought you said there was a housing surplus and that's why regulation stuff was ancillary? No, there are more empty, vacant homes that are still owned by people like, than there are homeless people like significantly more vacant homes than there are homeless people part of the problem one of the immediate uh problems is that people just sit on fucking properties because they see it as an investment land is not going anywhere chat no matter what happens land is not going anywhere land is finite okay 
So land value always increases, especially if you live in like a nice neighborhood, especially if you're fucking, you know, uh, not living next to a goddamn uh, uh, pool of water, body of water, and uh, the uh, rising sea level is going to actually decrease the land, which will then ironically increase the property value. So that's another uh, uh, concept. But you live by a pool now, King. Yes. I do. So. Uh, sure, but most of the homes are fuck nowhere. Not in the middle of this big city. Bad take, by the way. Pepega. No, even in big cities, there's a fuckload of vacant properties, dude. And the issue is deregulation only opens up the market for luxury high rise condominiums okay i make 40k a year and can't afford a one-bedroom apartment looking at renting a one-bedroom apartment it's like some castle i never thought my life would be like this yeah it's fucking dog shit eighteen hundred dollar a month mortgage so now i pay three thousand a month in rent the cherry on top is the true unemployment rate if we take the LICEP definition for unemployment, someone who is looking for a full-time job that pays a living wage but cannot find one, then the true rate of unemployment in the U.S. currently sits- I make $16 an hour and I can just by the skin of my asshole live in a 330 studio apartment for 800 a month? I live in Alaska, shit is mad fucked? What the fuck in Alaska, dude? I feel like it should be one place where like, they should encourage homeownership because you're in fucking literally Alaska. The only people that live there are like, Dudes who work I'm in oil and criminals who I ran away say. after doing many murders. So it is very surprising to me that you, you're having a hard time living in Alaska. What the fuck? Sorry, fishers too. Fishermen, murderers, and fucking dudes who work at the oil rig. It's at a staggering 23.7%. So even if, quote, affordable housing were available, it likely wouldn't be affordable because nearly a full quarter of Americans can't find a job that pays a living wage. With that context out of the way, let's look at how these problems combine to form the perfect storm for economic meltdown. We'll start- Do you cement over your pool? Pool is very high cost and maintenance? No. Why would I do that? Oh man, will you cement over your pool? Pool is very high cost and maintenance. You can create a garden slash farm back there with your mom. Yeah, dude. I'm going to cement over the pool so that I don't want my mom to even hear this because she's bought only bought plants so far, as I've told you already. She literally has only bought plants so far for the house. I'm like, mom, can you like, you know, can, can, we, can we get a bed and stuff like a bed frame? That'd be nice. She's like, yeah, no, totally. And then I come back. I come back to the house, only more plants, just plants. But no, I'm not going to do that. Also, here's yet another fucking when are you chatter one cucking the their own content. The podcast? So you telling me you don't want hot tub streams? Like that's what you, that's what you're saying. I'm confused by this take you, you you don't want pool streams and hot tub streams is you know yeah dude Start with everyone's favorite bad guys the billionaires it should come as no surprise that the people putting in bids at 60 80 100 thousand dollars over asking price are not your average person they're typically the ultra wealthy, usually through investment firms or other real estate poaching groups. Let's take Charles Koch as an example. Frank One of the billionaire Koch brothers, Charles has donated millions. He's talking about me, the uh, ultra wealthy billionaire. Of dollars to three conservative organizations spearheading the push to eliminate COVID eviction protections. This alone would be reprehensible. This is so insanely fucked, by the way. Here, yet another, yet another instance where like. Just like the, the fucking trying to stop the trying to not extend the eviction moratorium is 
you're a demon. Like you are literally a fucking demon. You are not just like any regular bad person. You are the worst person. Okay. Especially at a time when these rich fucks also constantly talk about how homelessness is such a problem. Oh my God. I'm going to move to another place where there's no homeless. It's like, okay, well, wherever you move, you're going to move to a place where there's other homeless people because you're probably going to move to a fucking urban environment. It is demon-like to want to create more homeless people in the midst of a gigantic birthday, homelessness chat. crisis you guys. that you Love fucking complain about nonstop. I tried to buy a house here outside of LA and one bedroom starter home is 950k pain. Yeah, no, don't tell that to fucking anyone else though. How is the USA Love still considered the first world country? Because there's a lot of rich people. It's the wealthiest country on earth, dude. But since the beginning of the pandemic, he's also been heavily investing in real estate, snatching up homes left and right to add to his massive portfolio of assets, among them the homes of the evicted and desperate. In April 2020, he dumped $200 million into Amherst Holdings, a company which brags it has acquired over 30,000 homes since 2012. Three Coke Real passed. Estate Investments was also among the investment groups that recently bought an ownership stake in SmartRent, a landlord technology company. Charles Coke is- What? What the fuck is SmartRent, dude? Wait, what? That's when your landlord restricts your... Wait, is it a way to like restrict your fucking temperature control for your... Oh my god, dude. That's fucking insane. SmartRent is an enterprise smart home automation company developing software and hardware that empowers property owners, managers, and home builders to effectively manage. Wait. Effectively manage, protect, and automate daily operational processes? Oh my fucking god, dude. Republicans are like 1997 George Orvin Animal Factory. Meanwhile, like... Mega donors of the Republican Party are literally investing into letting landlords control your temperature, dude. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, shit. Oh, this is like, look, look, I, I, I got, I got lucky with this current landlord I have. The one before this, not so lucky, okay? The one before this, I just literally, the heater did not work. It was an apartment, the one bedroom that I used to live in before this one. The fucking AC would break and I'd be like, the AC is broken. Can you please fix it? And then the landlord would be like, it was a management company. So it was even worse. We're like, no. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. We'll get to it. Never got to it. Okay. This takes it one step further where it's like, hey, you're using the AC too much. We're going to restrict your temperature, dude. Sorry, you signed a lease. So, yeah, guess what? I'm not letting you fucking... I'm not letting you go hey, below 70 people, when it's 150 soon, degrees on. outside. We got hardware, too. From self-guided tours to park management and access control, smart runs, integrations, partnerships with purpose built solutions provide endless options for owners and developers. Create a customized automation platform that works for them. Flexible and scalable to suit any property type. So they can do self-guided tours, contactless touring solution, ID checks. Wait. Smart rent will verify that prospect identity matches what is submitted on the ID cards and selfie upload. Occupants not mentioned once. Yeah, this is not for occupants, bro. This is literally to like make landlording more efficient. 
Smart room will ver verify that prospect identity matches what is submitted on the ID cards and selfie upload. Every property is unique and our solution enables personalization touring setup based on property demand and needs. What? Texans claim their home thermostats were raised remotely during energy shortage. <gasps> no. Living room thermostat. Lock the front door. Dimmer entry light. Parking management. Centralized parking database. And alleviate parking management issues. Months. Optimize parking space utilization and drive additional revenue opportunities. Oh my god, this is like when you can get your fucking guests. You can give Investing parking tickets going. to people in your fucking apartment complex. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god, dude. Oh, I'm looking at this dollar signs, of course. I'm a homeowner now, so <clears throat> dollar signs are... I'm seeing dollar signs in front of my eyes. You know what I mean? George Orwell in 1987, dude. If you don't pay rent, they literally lock you out of the apartment. Dude, you could torture your fucking tenants with this. You could literally crank up the heat in the middle of the summer if they're not paying their rent. This is a problem for us poor, so stop talking about it. True. Why am I even talking about this? Actually, I'm also perfectly fine with our horrible fucking healthcare infrastructure too, uh, because you know I can pay for uh, a healthcare complication. So why would I ever, why would I ever advocate for uh, you know Medicare for all? I mean, after all, I'm the one who's going to be paying taxes. Blah blah blah. Like you know, remember, remember, guys, I I can't advocate for things that don't uh, that don't impact me. Lord Hassan, have you please turn on the AC? It's 100 degrees. My apartment complex works with a predatory towing company. Once I left my parking pass on my seat instead of my dash, and they towed it, and I had to pay 300 to get it back. What the fuck? See. I could hack a smart rent device within a day. Okay, meow cakes. Not everyone has your fucking technological proficiency, okay? Bro, this is nuts, dude. This shit is so fucking dehumanizing. Like, you can't even... Rent should at least give you, like, a, 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 a protection from, like, it's shelter, right? It should at least have, like, a little bit of privacy. Now they can just, like, fucking install smart rental programs and, and fuck you over. Real-time space availability. Guest parking check-in. And you pay for it. Yeah, now when your guests come, you have to fucking pay for the parking for your guests. Reduce unauthorized parking through the use of sensor technology. Long-range intermediaries or software provides communities with actionable data and alerts that notify appropriate site teams or towing wet vendors. Let's go one year subbed. At Hassan Abbey, thanks for all you do. I agree there needs to be like additional shit. deregulation for this sort of stuff, right? Because I don't think you can like operate like a tiny fucking serfdom within your own goddamn house. Or within your own goddamn like apartment complex, so I'm pretty sure the government would not let, like, local government would not let you fucking, you know, ticket your own your own tenants as it stands currently. I just don't understand how people see this and think this is totally ethical and reasonable the way to earn revenue. How much is it currently being used? You think? I think that this is. This is a new opportunity to make money. Contactless property access management is fucking insane, by the way. You can lock and unlock your tenant's door. You can lock and unlock your tenant's door. That's fucking insane. Capitalism does foster a lot of innovation. You know what I'm saying? Access types and credentials. We offer a wide variety of access types and credentials. Like, 
fobs, pin codes. Maximize efficiency with the power to remotely control door locks, thermostats, lights, and more. Smart, smart apartment technology is transforming the resident experience and property management. Streamline the move-in, move-out process. One platform can manage vacant unit devices, access points, and more while providing an app for residents to remotely control their home. Elevated resident experience. You can just fucking, you know, spy on your residents, dude. Connect your personal ring devices. Residents can easily pair ring devices like cameras, doorbells, and pee peephole cameras for the seamless smart home experience using just one app that your landlord will have access to. Oh my fucking God. Hazan, all this is done already, but it's manual. There's hey, nothing brother, crazy with ticketing people who park house. in residence spots. You deserve it and love you. Keep up the hard Hazan, work. all this is done already, Here's but it's manual. More. Damn, dude. Of course, Ollie U. Myron, tier three for 17 months. Fucking uh, giving us the real estate developer's uh, point of view here. Thank you. I didn't realize that, like, uh, there was a way to streamline the fucking ring light process and also uh, be able to fucking turn uh you know your your uh lock your fucking residence out if you want to i used to work for a property management company and this isn't really new but more so integrated with smart control so there's little needed visits to the actual home Wait, As a property manager, as you know, the landlord can't just lock a tenant out of the rental, even if they're behind on payment or anything. Time to put a ring doorbell in the shower, pack man. Place a bit on two unit property this afternoon. First time owner, and I swear to God, I hope I win. Say fuck you to the wealthy people who are probably bidding cash on this to step foot in it twice. I will just hire a property manager. And we'll just hire a property manager. If I win, I'll be the coolest and best owner-occupied landlord ever. We have it in Alexandria, VA, in our apartment. What the fuck? 4K connected communities already. Asset protection. Sensors play a key role in protecting properties. Our platform can identify a variety of routine issues and immediately alert the appropriate people to help prevent catastrophes. Let's see that. Our software is set up to notify you at the first sign of an issue, allowing you to act quickly and avoid damages and costly repairs. Smart thermostats and high precision sensors monitor units in real time. Okay, that stuff makes sense. This, th this does make sense. Integrate temperature, humidity, flood sensors in one device. Reduce problems such as damp, mold, and condensation. Because, like, this is... This is legitimately a problem. Because, like, most landlords won't even fucking... <laughs> You're like, I'm real foggy. We had that problem in one of, uh, one of the uh, uh, places that I used to uh, live in. I lived in a three-bedroom apartment. Some of you may remember, like super, super old heads. Remember, this is the first time to get when I first started DNA streaming. Tested because they apparently DNA test dog poop at the apartment complex so they can find people. I just didn't go do it, and when they emailed me about it, I said no, and that was it. LOL. <laughs> That's hilarious. So my old, old apartment when I used to live with two other fucking adults. Um. We had mold. And like one of my roommates was like, I'm feeling really foggy all the time. Like, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. And then we realized there was like fucking black mold in the in the bathroom. Hassle. So like that shit happens a lot. So this kind of stuff could be helpful. Yeah, he was like fucking sucking in mold uh, fumes, dude.
leak sensors, humidity protection. Right, ten months hassle. Yeah, that that stuff is not that bad. We have that in our apartment. It sent us batteries twice automatically when our lock was low on the poggers. Yeah, asset management is not, asset protection is not that bad from what I see. Okay, let's finish this. Recently and then bought I'll, an ownership I'm gaming in Smart Rent, a landlord technology company. Charles Koch is not alone in this scheme. Billionaires, investment firms, and giant. This shit is all cool for homeowners. The issue is the infant infantilization of renters. First of all, still, I'm still a renter at this moment. Okay, I am now a homeowner as well. But like, my my point of view is not gonna change because I fucking own a house now. You, you realize that, right? Just like my point of view has Always. not changed about healthcare and free education and student loan debt relief. Just because I paid my fucking student loans. Because you know why? I'm not a fucking asshole, okay? Giant corporations are buying up as many homes as they possibly can, which is driving prices way beyond the reach of the average American. And they're also betting big on the lucrative future of the rental market. It should be clear that very few normal people are going to be able to afford to make offers on homes that exceed the asking price by tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars. But some media outlets would have you believe that giant real estate firms aren't the bad guys here. For example, Vox put out an article saying things like, everybody wants to blame BlackRock, and Wall Street isn't to blame for the chaotic housing market. Yeah, it turns out fucking they, uh, you know, they got a little conflict of interest there. I wonder if they mentioned To give it. them the benefit of the doubt, yes, obviously everything has multiple variables which influence material reality. But it's a little on the nose to say BlackRock is good, actually, when the CEO of Vox Investor General Atlantic is on the board of directors at uh, BlackRock. Uh, and even if that weren't the case, the Vox article makes some strange assertions, claiming, for example, that institutional investors just aren't that interested in single-family homes. This is demonstrably false, as firms like BlackRock have bought up hundreds of thousands of single-family homes since the Great Recession, and they continue to hold them hostage on the rental market. Then there's Airbnb. If you go on vacation, odds are you'll find dozens of cute, freshly renovated two-bedroom units to choose from. Entire neighborhoods empty except for out-of-state license plates. There's no such thing as an affordable home anymore. They've all been bought up, whether by institutional investors or wannabe real estate moguls, and turned into Airbnbs or rentals. And very few new ones are being built. In fact, there's a new trend of building suburban neighborhoods not with the intention of selling the homes, but of selling the entire development to investment firms who then rent out the houses. Vox isn't yep. the only instance of media trying to manufacture consent for endless renting. The Wall Street Journal says it's generation- Yes. They want to fucking change the, uh, they want to fuck over first time home buyers and turn them into generational renters. ...preferences that are pushing young people to rent instead of buying a home. But it's not preference at all. Most young people would love to have the stability of owning a home, especially when mortgages are now typically much lower than rent prices in the... Unless they're fucking socialist, of course, in which case that's not allowed. But, you know, for everybody else, yeah. To the dude that keeps saying you haven't run an ad, I checked, I did run an ad. But thank you. Thank you for being on the lookout for me for getting the run ads. I, I did run one, but thank you. Grats on the house. In the same area, but they've been priced out of home ownership. And now, it's looking like they're going to be priced out of renting too. Companies that have a stake in people renting are pushing for an end to home ownership. Bloomberg says things like, rising real estate prices are stoking fears that home ownership, long considered a core... You get a good interest rate? They're pretty good right now. Manage the lock mine at 2875. No, I... In comparison to that interest rate, no, I did not get a good one, okay? I don't have a very good credit, but I got, I got decent interest rate. I got three, seven, five. It's pretty good. I mean, is that bad? It's not bad. I thought three, seven, five was good.
Yeah, 30 year fix. It's okay. No, you need to refinance? Oh, too late. Anything over three is like a rip. Wait, what? I can't. It's 30 year fixed. I don't think you can refinance. Here's a jumbo loan. 375 is fine. Yeah. I don't know. Yes, Component know. of the American dream. Look at all these lefties revealing they bought homes. Got them. Look at all. Yeah, exactly. Hey, uh, take them away. Take them away, boys. They're in here. Yep. All the chatters that said that they know how to fucking, they know refinancing all the ones that admitted they have homes. Get them. Arrest them now. Yeah. This was a long and complicated multi-week process where I fake bought a house so I could get a lot of you to also admit that you had bought a house and refinanced and all this other stuff just so we could arrest all homeowners because everybody knows. One of the fundamental tenets of Marxist Leninism is no house. That's right. Why do you think I never left this house? Hassle. You fools. Admitted flunky. Thank you for the 10 tier one gift subs. Dream is slipping out of reach for low and moderate income Americans. That may be so, but a nation of renters is not something to fear. In fact, it's the opposite. They end their article with, This country was always more about new frontiers than comfortable settlements anyway. Which translates as, You will suffer and never be able to afford a home and that's good, because it's the American way. So, we have entire generations of Americans no longer being able to afford single family homes. We have rapidly increasing rent prices to the point where an eviction crisis is very likely. Large corporations are buying up all the available housing and actively trying to get more people evicted so they can snatch up their homes too. New communities are being developed not to be used for affordable housing, but explicitly for the purpose of making a new suburban renter class that is held hostage by landlords and faceless investment firms. And the media is telling us that actually this is what we want and that stability and building equity is bad. This KS, all adds KS, up KS, to KS, one KS, serious KS, economic KS, crisis KS, looming KS, on the horizon. KS, 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 it's always hard KS, to predict KS, exactly KS, what form KS, the fallout KS, will take, but it's usually a safe assumption that the brunt of the suffering will fall upon those who have little say in the matter. Lower income people who are just trying to get by. The major players who are manipulating the market and causing these problems will suffer no consequences. And if the Great Recession is anything to go by, they will actually dramatically increase their wealth at the expense of the rest of the population. Well, this all sounds pretty bad. What's the solution here? How can we avoid another massive economic collapse? I know. Yelling at leftist figures <clears throat> on the internet that bought houses in an expensive housing market. I think that would be a really good way to do this. No? I think yelling at me is probably the best way to solve this price, uh, this housing crisis. Stimsy the Republican, you're a grifter. You love capitalism and you love your multi-million dollar home. Guys, money changes people. Aren't you a Republican? <laughs> it's in your name, dude. Historically speaking, we can't. Capitalism is built on the maintenance of cycles of boom and bust, and they're fairly predictable in their timing. These crises are becoming more frequent and more damaging to the average person, but also more lucrative for the ruling class. And if we know anything about capitalism, it's that when the ruling class is benefiting from something, it will not change without a massive, drawn-out struggle. If you're a young person, or a person of any age really, if you're looking for a home, I don't think it would be wise to try to buy one now. I know it's easy to say, say- Well, oh, there you go. I didn't fucking- See, I should have watched the second thought video, dude. Save more money, but do what you can to squirrel away a few bucks here and there. Rent will continue to go up, 
But the chaos surrounding single-family homes can't last forever. It's unsustainable even in the fairly short term. I think a crash of some sort is likely. And hopefully, if we can ride out the storm, housing prices might come down somewhat afterwards. The giant real estate firms will have added many new properties to their portfolio, but it's very unlikely that they will have bought them all. Once supply chains recover from the pandemic, construction materials become more available, and the home buying frenzy dies down a little bit, hopefully there will be some homes available for first time buyers. In the meantime, we have some actions we need to take. First, we need to push back against the media talking points about generational preferences and the benefits of renting. They support a predatory, exploitative status quo that we should not accept. If they want us to rent, we need to demand affordable apartment housing with rates that only increase with inflation, not at the whims of parasitic landlords. We also need to remember that, once upon a time, owning a home was within reach for just about every American. Okay, this is anti-socialist rhetoric. He keeps talking about owning a home. Like, no, that's bullshit. American. Back in the 50s, a suburban home only cost two or three times the average salary which meant that not only could people easily afford them, they could pay them off in a matter of a few years rather than over the course of three decades. Like almost everything else under modern capitalism, housing has shifted from being seen as a basic necessity to a valuable commodity from which the wealthy can extract massive profits. The best thing we can do right now is continue to fight evictions, organize tenants unions to build bargaining power against the landlords, fight for higher wages across the country, and support our neighbors however we can. You are an individual, but you're also a member of one of two classes, either the working class or the capitalist class. If you do not own the means by which capital is produced, a factory, an office building, a block of apartments, a large company, you are a member of the working class. Wait, hold on. This doesn't track. Wait, what? Second thought, I don't understand. Why didn't you mention homeowners as a part of the capitalist class in that situation? It makes no sense. Left Twitter kept saying it's, you know, expensive house. Oh, okay, okay. Maybe not like just any regular home, but like an expensive home. If you own an expensive home, that means like you're, you're a capital owner, right? That's how that works, I think. And that means your fight is the same as the people at risk of eviction, or who make seven twenty-five an hour, or who can't afford their medical bills. Only by acting in solidarity with your class can you make a significant impact. If you do own the means of production, if you have wealth at your disposal, we need you too. We wouldn't have had Marx without Engels. Donate to mutual aid funds. Buy and distribute copies of socialist books. Use your free time to help in whatever ways you can. Everyone has a role to play. And in the housing crisis or any other fight, organizing is key to victory.